America is now an inflation nation. Inflation is making the value of your checking account go down, your savings account go down. It's making your 401k worth less. It's making your real estate equity worth less. And it's making your stocks all worth less. And it's kind of funny. The two words worth less are awfully close to the one word worthless. Hi, I'm Keith Weinhold. This is Get Rich Education. The United States recently hit its highest inflation rate in 30 years. Yes, this is becoming Inflation Nation. I've got some wild stats for you from the Wall Street Journal and also some new ways on how you can profit from inflation. Yes, new signs are emerging that we do have high inflation. In fact, it's befuddling some officials that previously thought inflation would be muted or of course there's that popular word transitory, but a lot of people kind of thought this inflation was a fluke and even officials, they are admitting that inflation is gonna be stickier than they thought. And you know, experts are concerned that persistent inflation, that could lower consumer demand and really put a chill on what had been a recovery that was heating up. Just take a look at this. Fed Chair Jerome Powell even warned Congress that inflation pressures could last longer than expected, a de facto admission that Fed Chair Powell himself was wrong. Some of these crazy signs of higher inflation are soaring wages. In fact, when the last jobs report was released, it showed that hourly earnings for an American worker rose 4.6% on a year-over-year -year basis. In fact, that's the second fastest pace as long as they've been covering this statistic, which is 15 years now. No one is complaining about bigger paychecks. That would include you. So if you get an increase in your wages, that's great. But what happens is when employers have to pay you a higher wage, they immediately need to pass that on and charge commensurately greater prices for the good or service that they sell. So therefore, your higher wage is just offset by that higher good or service price because now you're a consumer in the economy where you need to pay those higher prices. So it really doesn't help you out to have higher wages in this high inflation environment. And this is not anecdotal. Some companies are indeed moving ahead, charging higher prices to offset their higher costs. In fact, FedEx and UPS have raised prices and they've added new fees to packages. And it's interesting that they're doing this in the supply chain bottleneck. So an increased price, that's obvious and overt, but the more hidden thing is the service inflation hidden in your package delivery. With these supply chain bottlenecks, if it takes you five days to get your FedEx or UPS package, where it used to take you three days, and not only are you paying the same, but you're paying more for that, you're getting hurt with both a higher charge and service inflation because you're not getting as good a service as you were getting when they were delivering packages more promptly. Pepsi has already been raising prices on its drinks and its snacks, and it says more of those hikes are coming next year too. Cotton prices are up 25% in just the last few weeks. I mean, inflation is almost everywhere you look. I just got this postcard in the paper mail for residential trash service and it notified me that it is going up, and this is effective immediately, that 96 gallon bear cart quarterly service, yeah, bear, B-E-A-R, maybe trash companies are even branding their trash carts now, I don't know what that means, but the rate is gonna increase from $55 up to $67 for me. That's an increase of 22%. And then if you have an extra residential bag, like some extra trash out there at the curb, that rate is increasing for taking that bag from $3.14 to $6.45. So that's a doubling. We've also got soaring energy costs, which are really contributing to this higher inflation. These are some of the wild stats from the Wall Street Journal. U.S. crude oil prices are up 64% just this year. Natural gas prices have doubled just over the last six months. Coal prices have hit a record. Heating oil is up 68% this year, and the list goes on and on. Now, higher energy costs, understand that that's particularly worrisome for the economy because you can't just skip paying your heating bill or just say you don't want any heat in your house at all anymore. Heat is a non-discretionary item. See, everyone is forced to pay that higher heating cost. This is different from a non-discretionary expense, like say your next Caribbean vacation, and maybe if things got bad, you could put pause on that, but you can't put pause on the heat or on the electricity. These are non-discretionary consumer expenditures. You've got no choice. The price will be higher and you've got to pay it. 
And high energy prices, it acts much like a tax because you must pay it. And what that does when it acts like a tax is that takes money out of your pocket that you could have been spending on other things in the economy that you can no longer spend that money on. And see, this is exactly why higher inflation, especially for these non-discretionary items, slows down an economy. And what happens when you slow down an economy, yet you've got inflation in the economy? There is a name for that, stag Inflation. Stagflation is a portmanteau of the words stagnant and inflation. A stagnant economy with inflation is what stagflation means. And in the United States, we haven't had sustained stagflation since the 1970s, but markets don't like that. Goldman Sachs has done research. Stagflation has a high correlation with equities markets that sink. Yes, there is more and more evidence of stagflation. Hey, go ahead and put a YouTube like on this if you would. That doesn't mean that you like stagflation. It means that you like the content. You're learning a little something. You're being informed here. I would really appreciate it. What's interesting is that recently quarterly earnings calls took place. 224 of the S&P 500 companies mention the word inflation on their quarterly earnings call. So this is a problem. Everyone's talking about it. And Q3 quarterly earnings calls are happening soon. So we'll see if we can beat that 224 number. A lot of companies are concerned. And consumers like you are getting concerned. I mean, just your everyday shopping. Um, take a look at really, I guess, what's kind of become an American institution of the dollar store, like Dollar General and Family Dollar. One of those stores, the Dollar Tree, They've been around since 1986. They've been resistant about raising prices above a dollar for such a long time. But even that Dollar Tree recently announced that they're going to be selling products for between a dollar 25 and a dollar 50. They are now introducing those lines of products at the Dollar Tree. So what are they going to call themselves anyway? The dollar 50 tree or the dollars tree plural? or the $2.50 tree is what it's gonna need to be called by next year. I don't know, I don't think these names work very well. And you know what's interesting about that, and I still barely remember this as a kid, there used to be these stores, maybe analogous to today's dollar stores, called the Five and Dime. You used to read about these stores from yesteryear called the Five and Dime, that would just kind of just sell this general low cost merchandise. Well, inflation made the Five and Dime go away. In fact, you might have never even heard of a five and dime, but I can still remember these things. Inflation's making it go away. In fact, one of my favorite books on inflation is called Whatever Happened to Penny Candy. It's got kind of a quirky title, but it's a really great book about inflation. You used to be able to buy little gumballs and pieces of candy for only a penny, but inflation has made that completely obsolete. So you got to wonder how soon the whole concept of the dollar store will become obsolete, much like the five and dime has. Now, it's funny. We're an investing show. You think investors would have inflation on their mind a lot more because it reduces their nominal return, but I don't think it does. Just take this, for example. Say that a person bought Bitcoin for $50,000 one year ago, just to make a convenient example, and say the price of that Bitcoin went from $50,000, and say here a year later it increased in price up to $52,000. Well, that person, they just lost prosperity on that transaction because inflation has been running hotter than 5% on a CPI basis lately. Well, the difference between 50K and 52K is only 4%. So therefore that investor's prosperity was diminished because they didn't keep up with inflation. Oh, and to get a real slap in the face, they need to pay capital gains tax on that 4% nominal gain of $2,000 between 50K and 52K. It'd be the same for a stock investor that bought a stock at $50 and went and sold it at $52 over the past year. They have just had their prosperity diminished. You know, some Sometimes when I look at articles like this from CNBC that said oil tops $80 a barrel for the first time since 2014, there's no mention at all in the article about an inflation adjusted price. Well, on an inflation adjusted basis, oil might have to get to $100 or more today just to equal what $80 was seven years ago. So a lot of times I don't even know if these columnists are even thinking about the effects of inflation and then that gets passed on to the readers and they're not thinking about it. So oil prices are higher than they were, but on an inflation adjusted basis, they're not really higher than they were seven years ago. Boom.
roasted. So be mindful of inflation. I think that's really the point here. Besides this in-your-face inflation where I've been giving all these examples, there's also shadow inflation. I'm about to go on a real estate field trip to Alabama and in my hotel right down in the center of Birmingham, Alabama, I just learned before we get there that they're only going to provide room service every three nights. This has to do with what's going on with the health crisis and some other things. Well, that's a reduction in the quality of service that I'm getting, but they're not commensurately reducing the price. The price might even be higher than it was previously. That part being the overt inflation with the higher price, but this shadow inflation is I'm getting a lower service level. The New York Times was recently reporting about inflation and stating that car buyers increasingly these days if you're in the market for a new car you're advised to be flexible on the color of car that you get or the make of car that you get or the model of car that you get so you're paying the same price or more but yet you've got to make sacrifices on the features that you want to get you're often not getting what you want yet you need to pay the full price or higher my right hand person here at gre andrea she and her husband recently moved from georgia to michigan they've lived in michigan months now and they still need to sleep on a mattress on the floor because you can't get the bed in when you want to get it you can't order the beds all this furniture is backed up in the supply chain bottlenecks so you're reducing your quality of life that bed's worth less to you if you get it late. Surveys of restaurant cleanliness have gone down 4%. Another idea here of shadow inflation, service inflation. And you know, government statistics, they try to make adjustments to product quality. This is the Bureau of Labor Statistics that reports the inflation at numbers. But that process, which is known as a hedonic adjustment, that most commonly applies to physical objects. So hedonic means things that are associated with pleasure. So you're getting a reduction in pleasure in restaurant cleanliness, in getting a bed on time, in getting your room turned over daily at a hotel. That stuff just isn't happening anymore. See, it's difficult to make hedonic adjustments, especially to services. In fact, when the government reports the inflation number, the CPI, they do not incorporate quality adjustments on 237 of the 273 components in the consumer price index. And that includes the majority of services that I'm talking about here. Even if you're paying the same dollar, you're getting a reduction in service. This is shadow inflation. And you know, really the difference of what we talk about here is a lot of people just go on to complain about inflation or inform you about how bad it is. And I'm here to do that too. But the other thing that I do is tell you how you can actually profit from and benefit from inflation. Now, I think the everyday consumer credit sort of person just thinks, well, maybe if I buy a chest freezer, if I can even find a chest freezer, and before the prices of chest freezers go up, I could buy that and put it in the garage and stock it up with a whole bunch of bacon and frozen vegetables. Before the prices of those things go up, I'll just go ahead and store them here. Well, maybe you can do that, but that's really something that's not very scalable and that's a little quirky to do. Maybe you do that for prepper or some other reasons, but it's not really an effective way to beat inflation. You're not really moving the meter. So what we do here is an elegant at scale solution is something like you don't want to be a saver. If you had a million dollars in savings, inflation would badly erode your purchasing power. But oppositely, if you have a million dollars in debt on real estate and the tenant makes the debt and the principal payments completely for you and you have, say, 5.2% inflation like we've had lately with your million dollars in debt, you just got a 52K tailwind. You profited 52K because on an inflation adjusted basis, you only owe the bank back not a million dollars but really only 948K because inflation made it easier for you to pay back the bank as wages are higher, as prices are higher in an economy. You have shorted the dollar. Shorting something comes from the stock world. That just means that you're betting that the value of something is going to go down. Well, in this case, that's the dollar when you borrow with debt. And on that million dollars in debt, every year you benefit 52K if inflation is 5.2%. Pardon me, excuse me, excuse me, pardon me. The new CPI was released while we were editing this. It's me, the editor and GRE content manager. The new CPI is 5.4%. You would have a 54K 
inflation tailwind if you had a million bucks in debt. This graph shows the monthly changes. We have 0.4% in September, and this graph shows the growth over the last 12 months. You can find the link to this in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So in fact, the phenomena I just described about that million dollars in debt being debased, that is one of just three legs of the inflation triple crown. I'll put it up here. It's a three-part video series on specifically on how you can profit from inflation at scale as you own long-term fixed interest rate debt tied to real estate. You might be able to recite with me by now. Yeah, probably know it. You benefit three ways because with real estate, you benefit with asset inflation, debt debasement, which I just described, and thirdly is cash flow enhancement. That's the inflation triple crown. So I really advise you to you know be actionable and do something about it and even profit from inflation. It's something most people don't even understand inflation at all, let alone how to profit from it. So be sure to check out that Inflation Triple Crown three-part video series. Hey, I hope to see you live and in person at next week's New Orleans Investment Conference, the longest running investment conference in the world. It'll be my fourth time there. Speakers like Dr. Ron Paul and Peter Schiff and Jim Rickards and other people that are guests that you've seen with me on the weekly Get Rich Education podcast, they are going to be speaking there in New Orleans. Inflation and the Fed are obviously going to be huge topics. I'll either see you in person there next week or I'll see you even sooner here virtually on our channel. Thanks for being here, but you weren't here for me. You are here for you. We'll see you in the next video.